This whole show is about Jason Tatum's MVP case. Why is it suddenly a huge topic? What's really going on here? We'll dive into it and see, does he really have a case for the MVP? Where does he fall? It's all right now on the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Be ever ready. Recognize the city of champs. Boston, baby, we do what you can. Locked on number 18, Tatum and Brown, J team. Step back, we gon' wet that and slay teams. Of course, the Celtics, who else could it be? Screaming like KG with the Larry O'B. Corral is above average, assessing the team status. Best daily pod, no cap, salary matching. Clutch like Bird to DJ, keep John on replay. Primetime, dapping up the truth on the sideline. Rain and Jays, how it started, raising banners, how we finished. Locked on Celtics pod, home of the winners. B. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics Podcast. It's right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network, where it's your team every day, and I've got you covered every Monday through Friday, plus bonus podcasts on the weekend when the Celtics play, so make sure you are subscribed. Wherever you get your podcasts, watch a show on YouTube, hop into the comment section, become an everydayer. And I just got to say uh, thanks to all of you everydayers, everybody who was listening on Monday uh, for kind of persevering, I guess, through the delay we had a... Uh, a switch in providers uh, who distributes our podcast. So the Monday podcast was late. I normally want to make sure that all of your podcasts are there for you when you're waking up in the morning and doing what you need to do on the East Coast. Uh, so everything's back to normal, should be fine, but that was what that delay was. Uh, for those of you who are new to the show, I'm John Corrales. I used to play a long time ago. Now I'm covering the Celtics for Boston Sports Journal, hosting this podcast, and generally trying to add to everybody's Boston Celtics experience. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more, and right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150. If your bet wins, visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. We're getting into the Jason Tatum MVP talk. Everybody, suddenly, uh, since the All-Star break, uh, Stephen A. Smith said, hey, Jason Tatum is my front runner. And all of a sudden, everybody's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's let's do it. I've talked a little bit about it here on this show, but I'm going to spend the entire show getting into it. I'm going to do so with my buddy, Tom Westerholm, here to, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what you think. I have no idea what you think, what your take is. I'm a mystery. Jason Tatum. You are a man of mystery. I often say. <laughs> I, more and more people are saying, yeah, that I'm, yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. Let, uh, to me, Tom, as we let's just dive right into it. No, no chit chat, no time for a little small talk. This is serious, very consequential stuff. Yeah, MVP is a very serious topic, it is people unironically. It's like a booth, like. If you're talking if you're talking at NBA, it's like one of, one of the more serious it's, ones. It's that's you know, as far in term basketball terms, yes, it is. Yeah. I, I think two things are happening here. The, number one, well, more than two things. Uh, first and foremost, like shout out to Stephen A. Smith for starting this fire. He is very good at starting conversations. Congratulations to Stephen A. Smith. You are a content creating genius, like you also, always will be. Also, thank you. Stephen A. Smith, <laughs> you, you know, like that we need, we need people like this to, 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 to stir, you know, stir some stuff up. Like this, he is a stir. He's a pot stir for probably, sure. Eventually you and I probably would have gotten to the Jason Tatum MVP case, even if, but like to give it some, ju you know, but like, like, if it's like us, it's like, there's not as going to be as much juice as yeah, yeah. Stephen A. Smith or Kendrick Perkins, you know, like we need these, yeah. these stirrers. So, so Stephen A made loose. the case. So now, so now the from there, two things are happening. One, Celtics fans are like, yeah, man, I'd love to see JT get the MVP. Yeah. And more power to you. You're a Celtics fan. You want your guy to be the MVP. Absolutely. You should be arguing for his case. I'm going to probably say things that you might not even like. I know it's a Celtics podcast, but I try to keep it real. I try to keep it real. Like I want to be legitimate. I'm not gonna. The last thing I want to do is lie to fans. I'm going to give my honest opinion, and you can agree or disagree. Yeah. But as a Celtics fan, you should fight for your guy. I'm not going to tell you not to. But I think there are some people who are just kind of like, I don't know. They they want to ride the they want to ride the train. They want to ride the 
yeah, man, let me let me get some of this attention here that that Stephen A is. Let me be the remora on the Stephen A. Smith shark and be like, yeah, I, I agree with Stephen A. Everybody look at me too. I mean, for sure. Yeah. Like, and I mean, look, like, it's not like, like the, 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 the bones of a case are there, right? Like you look at how good the Celtics are. Um, you know, you, you look at, at just the, I don't know if you could hear that glass breaking in the background. Yes, I could actually. <laughs> um, Tom Westerholm joining us from a Greek wedding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, I mean, look, I, I think you look at how good the Celtics are, right? That This is I, like just one of the better teams um, that we've seen in a while, at least one of in the a long time season teams that we've sure. seen um, just, just piecing everybody. And the, the center of that is Jason Tatum. You know, like we can talk until we're blue in the face about how good Chris Dapps Porzingis is and how everything fits together, you know, so much better. Frankly, how great Jalen Brown has been in one of the best seasons of his career. Like he's been awesome. Um, you can look at the bench. You can, you know, talk about the job that Joe Mazzulla is doing. All that stuff is true. This team is really good. All of that stuff. But it all starts with Jason Tatum. And like, that's super valuable. <laughs> if you're, if you are the engine behind that, like, I, I think that sometimes like best player on a best team gets um, discounted a little bit, right? As like an MVP case. And like, sure, justifiably so. Like, I, I understand that that's not like the strongest case in the world. And there's numbers that show that, you know, blah, blah. But at the same time, like it's like to be the best player on the best team, that is an accomplishment and that it deserves to be talked about. You know, like I think I think that like the Jason Tatum MVP case is worth making because it kind of like it, it speaks to part of the story of this season. Right. You can't tell the story of the NBA this season without talking about Jason Tatum. You definitely can't tell the story of this regular season without talking about the Boston Celtics. So, like, you know, there's I think. Agree with you, I think. I think we're going to be in agreement that we're going to come to the conclusion that you know, we probably wouldn't vote well, Jason Tatum MVP this year. But, <laughs> but, like, to talk about it is not crazy. It's not like Stephen A is no, just pull, it's not. pulling this out of nowhere. It's pretty reasonable. It's reasonable in that, right, like, the, the, the way people are arguing it is best player on the best team. They're the, – the, I think – that argument in and of itself argues against Jason Tatum because you're not arguing for Jason Tatum. Okay. You're making a generic argument for the best player on the best team and then retrofitting Jason Tatum in there. Like that to me is, I, I'm using the word disrespectful, but I don't know if that's the exact right word, but you're not sitting there saying to me, Jason Tatum is an MVP candidate. You're saying to me, the Boston Celtics are a juggernaut. Okay, who's the best player on this team? Oh, it's Jason Tatum. Well, that's who the MVP candidate should be. If it was Jalen Brown, you'd be saying Jalen Brown would be the, you know, and, and I know that that argument, as I argue against myself, well, Jalen Brown would have had better numbers. But, like, if you're, if you're going to say best player on best team, Okay, that's fine. I get that. That's an argument that I think is valid, but it's more valid in a tie-breaking way mm. to me. Is it so if you're telling me that Tatum and you're you're choosing between Tatum and Luca, let's say, and well, Tatum's the best player on the best team, and he's having an MVP season, so he's the MVP. I wholeheartedly agree that the best player on the best team has automatically bestowed upon him some level of MVP. And Jason Tatum is having a spectacular season where the numbers are very good and better than a lot of players in the NBA, right? So I'm not sitting there saying that he's not going to get MVP votes. But I, if we're going just to say – What's, what's your argument for Jason Tatum? And your first thing that you say is best player, best team. You're not really arguing for Jason Tatum. You're making, you're, you're going, you're, you're doing something different. I'm well, going to let you respond. I'm going to let you respond uh, in just a second, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get Tom's response in just a second here. Today's show is brought to you by Nissan. Nissan 
uh, has, knows that you are the kind of driver that maybe you like to push things a little bit further. And if you ever wonder what adventure could be around the corner, our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. Like the 2024 Nissan Rogue. It's perfect for city drives and great escapes. Class exclusive Google built in is your always updating assistant to call on for almost anything. Gone are the days of connecting your phone. Ugh, what a pain. Google Assistant, Google Maps, Google Play Store are all built right in with the 12.3 inch HD touchscreen infotainment system. The 2024 Rogue is the perfect mid size crossover for your next adventure. Want to go bigger? The 2024 Nissan Armada will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024 Armada. Take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Go check out Locked On Sports today. Not only is it the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, it is now available on Amazon Fire TV in the free Fire TV channels app. So if you've got that Fire TV or the Fire Stick, you can go ahead and open up the free Fire TV channels app and find Locked On Sports today. You can always find it on YouTube 24-7 covering the top stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On. You might even find the Locked On Celtics podcast out there. All right, Tom Westerholm, I interrupted you for the very important ad read. I had been making the case that you're not really arguing for Jason Tatum for MVP if you're saying best best player on the best team. Your response? Yeah, yeah I think it's – when you do that, right, it, it, it's kind of like if you based it exclusively – if you based – because because the thing about most valuable player, right, is that it ties in so many different things – and it has, you know, it has historically done that. Like it's, there's, there's no rubric, right? You can't just, you can't just like plug a bunch of I numbers in. I hate those in. cubes. <laughs> a rubric cube. Um, you can't just plug a bunch of different Never kind heard. of things in and create a, and be like, okay, this is the MVP, right? Like, yes, that's right. It, it, it's, it's different every year. You know, it's like, there's, there's going to be some narrative in it. There's going to be some, um, there's going to be like plenty of like impact yes. stats. There's going to be little bits and pieces uh, in, in a lot of different the ways. Definition is very fluid. It's very fluid. And I think that's a good thing. Like, I think that's okay. Um, you know, like, I, I think that that does lead to it being probably getting it wrong every once in a while, but like, again, yeah. I would like, it makes it human. Like I kind of, I like that, you know, I like that yeah, yeah. there's, there's, there's that element to it. Um, you know, when you just say best player on the best team, I like, it's a little, it's lazy, right? It, it, it's, it's, it's the same thing as if you took like the guy with the, with the, with the best advanced stats or the best counting stats. Like that's not, that's not a case. That's not an MVP case. An MVP right. case has to bring in so many different elements. And, you know, I think that that, uh, and I think that you can bring in some of those elements with Tatum. And, and some of those are going to be related to best player on mm -hmm. best team. That's fine. It's just that can't be the only thing. There's got to be other stuff, too. And when you start to get into the other stuff, that's where I think you start to kind of lean away from him a little bit. Um, it's, but, yeah. It starts to fall apart a little bit. And what I don't want this to be is be, when you argue for or against something, it tends to sound like, well, you're crapping all over Jason Tatum, which is like Jason Tatum, I feel like is kind of willingly punting a little bit Agreed. on the MVP, Yeah, you know, because take, take that, that game, I forget which one it was 30 points in the first half. And this was his chance, right? This was a real chance for him to go out there. All these other guys have dropped 60, 70. It's, this is the chance for Tatum to be like, fellas, I love you. And and this wouldn't have hurt the team at all. Not one they, iota. A hundred percent. If he had said, guys, look, we got this game. I I, I, I kind of want to do this. Can, can you, you, how do you guys feel about it? Everybody would be like, hell yeah, man. We're going to feed you. I'll send all the picks for you. All of that stuff. He, he, he didn't do that. He just, this is the first year. This is the first Celtic season that I think that would like, I think this no, is right. the only one that it would have been. Okay. I don't think it would have been any other year. Yeah. 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 No, you're right. You're right. And, and I, and honestly, this is the first Celtic season where he wouldn't have that. He hasn't like, I think last year he would have done it last year. Yeah. He would have gone for it. Right. Yeah. And 
look, just real quick on that. It's kind of interesting because when you talk about the other aspects of his MVP case, the fact that he's willing to punt it is like kind of a point in his kind favor. The, it's like, kind of the argument, right? Yeah. yeah, that's that is kind of the argument. Yeah, that he's like, it's it's I don't know. It, it's the it's the basketball equivalent of like not caring and suddenly becoming more attractive. Like I just don't care about putting all this time. On me. And you're just like, wow, that quiet confidence is kind of sexy. Like, yeah, that's, exactly. kind of like that's like exactly. the Jason Tatum is exuding a little bit of that quiet confidence. And people are like, Oh, hmm, maybe he is an MVP. Uh, but you know, the, the numbers, the counting stats, like what? 20, 27 points, um, eight and a half rebounds, almost five assists, a, a steal, and almost a block. Like, those are really high-level numbers. He's he's shooting 36.5% from three. That's that's league average at this point. Um, so he's he's shooting – his shooting is right in line. Those are those are good numbers. But there are players with better numbers. Totally. And, and, and this is the thing. To be the MVP, I feel like you have to have a – it's that little – hint that that little hint of like oh there's something there's something here right that that if you took this guy off the team they are done which is why luca uh you know for a team the west is weird i'm gonna say the eighth seeded mavs they're the, you know they win a game they're the second seed or whatever um but luca you take luca off of that mavs team and it's like pff, trash so that's the argument like you know, you start to, it's a classic MVP argument of take him off the team and see what happens. You take, you take Jokic off of the nuggets and so, hey, no, no disrespect Jamal Murray, but I mean, come on. Well, I that mean, team is no good. The most extreme version of that is Shea Gilgis Alexander. Like the, yeah, you take, yeah. you take Shea off that team and yikes. Ugh. Like, yeah, like, right. Nuts. So like, get him Gordon. That's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But that so, and you take Jason Tatum off the Celtics, and that really hurts them. But okay, so you're starting Jalen Brown with Al Horford, Kristaps Porzingis, Derek White, and Drew Holiday. That's still a pretty damn good starting five. That's, that's a, a pretty damn good team, man. Four seed, three seed. Yeah, like that's that's still yeah. a really good team. Yeah, which is why I made that argument the other day, like. If if Tatum goes down, like it's worse for Przingis to go down in a sense because they got nothing to they got no like Al Horford is great, um, but he's not doing what Przingis does right. Mm. So like if you can make that argument on this team, like you start to erode that like well he's the MVP. Like I am not disrespecting Tatum at all when I say this. It's just that this is how the Celtics are built, and Tatum has bought in. Porzingis said it after the game uh, against New York. He could go for the MVP if he wanted to, and he's not. And because he's not, you know what's happening? Jalen Brown is not doing the, oh, well, it's my turn now. And so Jalen is back into his place. And like, it, you know, where he's the at the, at the best, uh, playing at his best. And so Tatum's at a place where he's playing his best. Jalen's at a place where he's playing his best. Neither of them is trying to do too much where mm -hmm. that is like the absolute worst, the Celtics thing, uh, worst place the Celtics could be. Then Holiday, White, and Porzingis can flow off of that because those guys draw a ton of attention and those guys are now willing to pass. That's, I guess, the, the ultimate summation of, wow, Jason Tatum's being the most valuable version of himself for the Celtics while not actually putting up a case for the most valuable player. Yeah, I mean, he's he's doing like maybe the best possible thing for his legacy too. Like it it's so all yeah. of this is so symbiotic, right? Like the, it's like it's like Tatum has bought in and by buying in, Tatum is turning himself into the best version of himself. Like not the most statistically impressive version of himself, but clearly if you watch this team the best version of himself. And that has yeah. turned this team into clearly, if you're watching it, the best version of this team. And as long as that continues, this team is going to be a contender. Like that's yeah. how good Jason Tatum is because if he keeps buying in and making everyone better to this degree, because he's making everybody better too. That's, 
you know, you want it, you want another little like kind of under the radar Jason Tatum MVP case. Like there's these little little things, and we talked about it before, but it's like it's like uh, some of the guys who leave the Celtics aren't as good. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. like that's another little, you know, it's a little. Why know, is Derek White so damn good? Because he's so good, but he's also. So good. But, but also, also it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, you know, like, yeah, like, um, you know, and when guys who left as well. So, um, <laughs> like, I, I don't know, man. I, I think, uh, <laughs> like, uh, it, it all just works together so well. And if, and if yeah. Tatum starts, you know, like, if, if this team accomplishes what they're trying to accomplish once, twice, a few times in Tatum's tenure, like, that's going to be so much more valuable for his legacy than an MVP award. Like an MVP award is great. Like that, you know, that sticks with you forever. Derek Rose is always going to have his MVP award. It might, it might get him into the hall of fame, even though, you know, the rest of his resume doesn't, you know, like probably mm. he'd, be, he'd be very borderline. Right. Like, but like that might do it, but like Jason Tatum, like if you get multiple MVP, if you get multiple titles, like, like you're trying to do yeah. right here, that's so much better than an MVP. That's going to last a lot longer. I think this is actually laying the case for a future MVP mm. for him. So we'll we'll talk about that in just a second. Today's show is brought to you by Better Help. Now I know uh, the benefits of therapy because uh, I've gone through it myself. I'm a big proponent of it. I'm a big proponent of mental health. And whether it's something you want to get just off your chest, something at work, your boss is driving you crazy. And you just haven't felt the, or maybe it's a person in your life, a significant other. You can't talk about that person. You want to get something off your chest and just unloading that feels good. Or maybe it's something deeper. Maybe it's something you've been holding for a while and you want to talk through some of that stuff. Therapy can, can help. Better help is going to help you get started because they take the entire process, put it online. It's designed to be flexible. It's designed to be designed to be suited to your schedule and it erases two big problems when it comes to therapy. One, finding a therapist because you don't have to find somebody within your area. You've got uh, a number of licensed therapists right here on BetterHelp. And two, finding the right one. Because if you're not clicking with your therapist on BetterHelp, you can switch. No extra charge, no nothing. So easy to find somebody, a licensed therapist, and easy to switch when you don't click if you don't click. So go check it out, betterhelp.com slash locked on NBA. You get 10% off your first month. Flexible, suited to your schedule. It's going to give you the best chance at making therapy work. Better help. H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on NBA. Thanks for making Locked On Celtics your first listen every day. Hey, when there is a game, go check the game out on Sirius XM. It's a, you know, these national broadcast games here. If you don't like who you're hearing on ESPN or TNT, turn the volume down. Turn up the SiriusXM app, match your uh, audio with the TV, and you hear Grandy and Max. So go check that out on the SiriusXM app. Let's get back to this MVP conversation with Tom Westerholm. And this is uh, something that, you know, Draymond Green has, uh, you know, he, he brought up on his podcast. Uh, and, and I think if Tatum wins a championship, you know, if the Celtics win a championship here, Tatum gets finals MVP, let's assume. Uh, then next year, Tatum having this exact same year climbs in, in the voters eyes, because like you said, narrative comes into it. And Tatum even said, he hopes that people aren't holding the past against him. And I would hope that's not the case too, because that should not happen. Right. I, I think that definitely happened with Jokic last year, which is complete crap. And I thought it was just terrible. Embiid had a strong case for MVP and all of that stuff. But then once Jokic won you know, a championship there, people were like, oh, hmm, maybe he should have been the MVP. But like, no, he just should have been the MVP. Now, Tatum, I, I, again, I, I think it's pretty clear. I don't think he has a strong case against just because Jokic is, I think, the front runner. Um, and, you you know, you can maybe say he's he's like third. Um, you can make the case for, you know, Shea Gilgis Alexander for sure. Giannis is always going to have a case. Um, Tatum can be in that mix for sure. Uh, and I think the momentum here will kind of carry him a little bit, uh, get him a few more votes, but the ch a championship this year 
starts to lay the groundwork for like, if he doesn't win it this year or next year, people are going to start to say like, Hey, Tatum's Tatum's having some really good years. The Celtics have won a championship, maybe two. Uh, you kind of, the narrative folks are going to be like, kind of need to get him an MVP to reward him for these, M- like a series of MVP years. Um, and then the, he sacrificed, he, he willingly took a step back. Like that stuff starts to enter the, yeah. the, the conversation more like it's not going to enter the conversation in the moment. Yeah. It's going to enter it later. So I think that's where, and I think with experience on top of it, Tatum's going to start to find the little places where, you know, Hey, maybe, maybe I can pad my stats a little bit more in the second quarters, right? Like I, I can, I can go for like a couple extra points here. I can grift a couple extra free throws there and get, get myself to those 30 points without hurting the rest of the team. But I think, I think a championship resume starts to raise his status with voters. Yeah. And and I I think that's fair too, right? Like, I don't think this is just like an all like Tatum's, you know, down the line, Tatum's going to like trick people or something, you know, or like the Celtic success is going to force people's hand and they're going to have to do it, you know, (laughs) whether it's real or not. No, no, no. no. Like if Jason Tatum, like if, if they win a title and like, you know, they're in the same position and Tatum's putting up similar numbers, well, well then I think it's pretty clear how valuable Jason Tatum is. Right. And That's I think, right. yeah, you know, like, sure. Like, you know, if, if you need, and I understand it's a regular season award and, and all that stuff for sure. But like, um, I do think there's a little bit like, like the, the narrative people, right. There, there's always going to be that, um, that, that little bit of like, well, this guy did it in the playoffs last year. And then his, his regular season is, is really, really good. So, you know, like there's going to be the little elements of that. Um, you know, it's going to be a lot harder for, for, for a Giannis to win an MVP the year after he got bounced by an eight seed, you know, there's going to be like bits and pieces of that within the voting, I'm sure. Um, but I do think that like, you know, if, if, if Jason Tatum proves it in the playoffs, right. And if, if the, if the Celtics prove it in the playoffs that they're, that, you know, if they win a title, if they do the thing that they want to do, like, I don't know, it kind of cements where they are, where they're trying to get to who, who they've been in, in a way that I, I don't think is entirely unfair. Or un- un- untrue, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, look, I, I, I just wherever that lands, it's going to land. Um, and you can't stop the the voters from vo- like. I, I'm not a big fan of narrative kind of yeah. driving the MVP. You're, you're either having an MVP season or you're not. And the loss to the Warriors two seasons ago should have no bearing on of course what people but the fact of the matter is that plus the loss to Miami last year it's it, it colors how people see these guys yeah so if the the current kind of view of Tatum is talented but not quite there yet then that's going to depress his his stock now there are also a bunch of guys above him in this race that haven't done it yet either, but they also, you can say, well, SGA, man, he's just getting started. Luca rocket ships to the moon. It's never going to come down. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Uh, Luca has actually the benefit of, of bad front office decisions. Be like, it, you know, it's not Luca's fault that they trade away Jalen Brunson. Look at what he's doing. And like, they, they should have kept him. That's blah, right. blah, blah. You know, like they, the Grant Williams thing didn't work out and all this stuff. Uh, so he's, he gets a little bit of a pass from that. Uh, so look, it is what it is. I think the bottom line here is that I think two things are true for Jason Tatum this season. He is immensely valuable to this team because he's not doing some of the things that would get him more attention in the MVP voting. Um, and I hate that. That's just a fact that you're, if you're not putting up those gaudy numbers or those big like signature performances then you know if you're if you're if you're willing to take the step back because that's what the team needs and so then then great that that's great for the team and that's what he should be doing and and that's that's all fine um i forget what my second thing is uh but i don't know whatever it is i think tatum has has taken this step back and whatever i i Maybe maybe not even step back is is the right term. Like I, I think he's he's 
super, super valuable. Oh, the other thing is he's, he's first of all, okay, let me finish this thought. He's super valuable to this team. He's incredibly like, obviously, yes, you're right. He's the engine behind all of this. And he's, I wouldn't want to change a thing for him this season because it's really working in Boston. Everything is working perfectly. The other thing is number two, Jokic is just better. And like there, there, yeah. there are a couple other guys that you're like, they're, they're kind of making a better case. They are just making a better case than Jason Tatum. It's not that, you know, Tatum can believe he's the best player in the league and he should, he should believe he's the best player in the league. Jokic is the best player in the league in reality. And, you know, he can, he just plays the game in a way where it's just, it, it's ridiculous. Now, if Tatum goes and beats Jokic in the finals, then people go, Ooh, wow. Hello. All right. Now a new argument, but um, I wouldn't change a thing about Jason Tatum. He's the things that, that don't make him like the traditional MVP candidate or what makes him the most valuable in Boston and things will change eventually. I think Jokic is the MVP right now anyway. Um, and I think that's kind of where it ends. Totally. And I think all of that is true. I also, and I also think that like it speaks to how valuable Jason Tatum is to the Boston Celtics that like, they wouldn't trade him for Nikola Jokic. Like, I don't think that that, that mm. like, if, if those two teams were like, I mean, they would obviously would never, but like that conversation, both teams would say no to that trade, I think. Um, and like, I think that speaks to, to Tatum's value, right? That like Jokic is the better player. Um, but Tatum is so valuable on this team and his attitude on this team is so valuable. And the way that he contributes is so valuable is, his you know, that, that kind of like, you know, that, that quiet confidence that uh it's <laughs> really, really got us in our eyes uh, jason here. bateman will say on smartless <laughs> um yeah um, it's uh yeah yeah so yeah. so I, I think that's i think that really speaks to to his value and to to the season that he's having it's 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 not an mvp season in kind of the sense that he's going to bring home an award but it is it's his value i mean it, it it's everything that the celtics need every single he, thing that the celtics need it, I, I'll go back to that Porzingis quote that I used before. Tatum's, Tatum's willingness, and I, I'm going to forever look at for this season that 30 point first half. Like that is my number one example. Not going for 60 in that moment. I think when you look back, when the story of the season is written, I think guys will look at that game and go, that's when we knew, like, yo, you knew he was committed, but that's when he proved how committed he was because no one in the room would have blinked if he said, I'm going for it, and he didn't go for it. And if I was on that team, and I, I was like, hey, buddy, you, there's like a 50-piece here, 60-piece here waiting for you. And he was like, nah, like, you guys got to get your, we got to work on some of these things. I'd be like, God damn. <laughs> I, yes, sir. I'm, I'm mar falling in line right behind you, buddy. Oh, what do you need wall, me to do? That wall right there, I'm going through it. Yeah. Let's go through it. Yeah. Come okay, on. no problem. Because just thinking of it from a player's perspective, I'm like, yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Let's go get ourselves a chip, man. We are this. This is my dog. This is my guy right here. Yeah. That's that's the impact I think he has on that team by doing that. And yeah. MVP be damned. Get you get get an MVP later. All you need is one. Like he, all you he, need, you really only need the one. You only need the one, and you're like he's already going to be like he's on a Hall of Fame path. We know he's going to end up being a yeah. Hall of Famer, yeah. you know. But uh, you just need that one. I mean, you want to get three like Larry? Sure. I mean, go for it. <laughs> but you know, who knows what he's going to be down the road? But this year, I think this year the focus is just so much on getting that championship. It's like whatever, whatever. Everything else is a big whatever. Kobe only got one, right? Uh, did he only get one MVP? I think he only got one regular season MVP. And if if that's uh, the case, Tatum, you got all the time in the world, buddy. Oh yeah, no. <laughs> dude's only twenty five. Like You're he's only 25. like twenty five. Yeah, he's not even, like is he twenty five yet? I don't even yeah, know if he he's twenty five. Yes, he he is. okay. March third. Yeah, okay. Yes, he turns twenty six in like five days. Okay, so yeah. yeah. Um. Wow. All right. Well. We'll say happy birthday, Jason Tatum, to, you know, maybe maybe an eventual championship. All right, Tom, thank you so much. Always appreciate, appreciate you. Man.
And I always appreciate you, the listener, you, the watcher. Let me know what you think. Let me know if we're on point with this discussion. Uh, as I always say, like, I want to keep it real with you. I want to make sure that you guys know that uh, it's not just fanboy. It's not just pom-pom waving. And it's not just cri criticism for the sake of criticism or, or putting fake arguments out there. I want to explore these topics in a real way. And I think this is, this is the appropriate landing spot for the Jason Tatum MVP conversation. But hop into the comment section on the YouTube page. Let me know what you think. And if you're an everyday or if you're a listener on the, on the audio side, I would love it if you shared the podcast. Everybody, share the podcast. Spread the word. Tell your friends. Tell your family. Tell the world they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast right here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day.